So here's my little wood light set up. I'm just getting ready to uh, throw it in. Let's see if this helps there. A little bit. So I'm going uh, to work on a live edge bowl. So I remove some of the bark. This isn't going to be long enough here. So I'll run out of adjustment. I made this little piece for that. Let's see. Might have a hard time uh, doing this one handed. There we go. So we'll have to see how this video turns out. Because I uh, have to find somewhere to put this because right off the bat it's going to be pretty, pretty shaky. But, you know, want to make sure it spins free. Got it on its lowest gear setting in there. Set down to its lowest tier. Let's see where I can possibly put you guys. I'm not sure if I have a spot. I'll have to move some stuff around and try that. So. There we go. Hopefully this doesn't end up being too shaky. Because this is going to be pretty rough to begin with. So we'll just work on roughing out the shape here. So this is actually going to be the bottom of the bowl right here. So. Not only do I have to finish rounding this out, I've just kind of chainsawed it up so it'll fit here. And then we'll have to get this all level and then pull the bottom of the bowl up around here. It looks really cool. This will be my third live edge bowl. So, let's see. Going forward. just uh, do some of the rounding out and then show you when it is now the sound might not be as good uh, doing it this way but maybe you'll uh, still be able to hear me seems to be a little more stable Let's see if that light yeah that light doesn't seem to help much so here we go so we got her in there secure Bump the speed up a touch. And I, I don't like to wear gloves with the wood lathe, but this is dug through and it's full of pitch, so I like to wear these latex gloves just so the hands don't get it so bad. Greenwood. He's splashing me with water and pitch. So let's bring you up here and uh, show you this. So you can see it's starting to round up. Right there is going to need quite a bit more. But you can kind of start to see the shape. The more I take it in, the higher these low spots will be. But then it, it makes kind of a nice wavy bowl. This will make a nice and beautiful one. Um, the other trick I've found is if you cut this during the winter time, 
it's a whole lot easier to get the bark to stick on there than it is uh, if you cut any other time of the year. Uh, especially if you cut in spring, you can't get that bark to stick for nothing. So. Let's see if this view's any better. Then maybe you can. Now if you see I kind of catch a spot and work it over it seems to work the best. Just kind of scraping because I'm cross grain here. to get that part out yep so got quite a bit more see that gives me a nice low spot to work from stop and check see we're we're getting close here but in order to take this area down more we'll have to take this one down we got quite a bit here yet so so we got quite a bit more to take off so we'll see how that uh, we'll just keep working at it here got that somewhat rounded we're going to switch up it's part of what I'm battling there is the uh, as the distance grows from the tool rest just get more catches yeah, well, I'm sure this isn't the best technique, but 100% self-taught, different techniques that work, and I found each piece of wood's different. Well, this is a 
you know, the, the sapwood obviously off a you know, decent little chunk of Douglas fir so you know cross grain that's one thing that's interesting is this is almost sanded smooth right there you get a lot of tear out here so we'll do a whole lot of scraping but uh, you know and a lot of sanding but we're a long ways from that you know we still need to clean this up too but uh, this is really green so I'll dry this in the microwave you know over the course of two three four days but here we go this little flare I often do that but as you can see we've taken all that out so I need to get rid of this little flare here and then work this backside so there we go kind of see it flashing and see that it's still out here it's where it's hard to catch this little bit right here where it's flaring because there's so much where this isn't here but what I'll do is I'll make a little mental mark that I'm like right there with it so if I just come right out to the end here and work it I can get that Just want to be careful because this bark stuck on there pretty good but still somewhat fragile we don't want it to break big chunks of it off if we can help it you know like it broke a little bit I think we're still good I always like to inspect for <coughs> odd cracks before I go much further there's a lot of crack cracks in the wood that can be either turned out worked around or uh, I haven't done much of it for it's usually like maple that cracks real bad sometimes around knots is, I'll catch them early and just fill them with a little CA glue a little super glue and uh, get them set up you know and one trick I found with that is I'll turn those you know uh, I'll get it glued partially and that'll leave kind of a low spot there then I'll uh, put some on there and hit it with a little of the sawdust from turning that actual piece and then hit it with the activator and it looks decent it'll save a piece anyhow but now we got to clean up this side
Now, so you'll see a lot of this weird pulling. Part of this is, is it still actually needs to go down quite a bit further from that. But this stringiness goes away once you dry it. So nothing to worry about. pretty cleaned up so let me set this back up there I'll drag this out what you got to keep in mind though is at this point you just got your screws holding it on because I can show you that when I get it off here but there we go going to be making a spot for that chuck right there so just got to keep it in mind on what you're doing here I'll go a lot slower but I've, I've used it quite a few times a few yeah and as you can see that's a little bit big but we'll make sure that we get good tension with it as this spreads out but I do that on purpose I don't want to make minimum size you can see that that gets tight with quite a bit left to go on there if you make make it to where it barely fits if that warps it all during the drying process then you can't get your chuck on there so that's no good if that happens to you so there we go. So let's just take this off here. So you can see it's just four screws. And that's that. there we go well don't know how much I lost there but my other battery died so is what it is and we'll move on so didn't notice till I was stopping to uh, change out tool rest here Each bowl's a little bit different. You learn just to use what you got and we'll kick this at an angle. I really like to leave my tail stock in as long as I can for the added support. So ain't room for that one yet.
So as you can see, I'm just removing material, I'm not worried about it being pretty. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. I have different tools for it and stuff, but you obviously want to leave at least an inch on the bottom. But the other thing to think about is you have that hole there. So that probably goes about that deep. So then we want to be somewhere up right about here. So you kind of find a deeper one of your deeper spots. So see we're getting we're getting close there. Um, let's take a look right in here we'll clear that up a little bit <coughs> thinking just a touch further down then we'll get this uh, center out I know my shop's a bit of a mess there in the middle of reorganizing so now I could just back this off and just turn all this out but I like to just get her nice and thin and you'll see there we go and that's actually how this piece was made so I'll save this come right over here add it to the collection so now Tighten that up or it'll rattle like mad. Now we're using these gouges. Maybe a bit lower center. Maybe right here at
take a look. See what we got. So that's getting in there. And we'll thin her out quite a bit more after it dries, but we want that plenty of room to take out the warp, but it kind of gives you an idea it'll should look pretty nice. Well, and then, uh, you might also, you know, you end up with uh, <coughs> dusty. End up with lots of these shavings and that could be a little bit of a pain, but I just feed the old barrel stove with it. Keeps it nice and warm. So, kind of goes without saying, also. Um, and you've seen it in the one, a face shield. I really like it. <laughs> I like the wire mesh one. You know, but you do get a little of the moisture still, but uh, definitely wear some sort of eye protection. Um, I also had earplugs in for part of that, and it's not that it's loud, but it's that when you're kind of leaning over at an angle trying to get the inside of the bowl, you end up with an ear full of sawdust. So that's just the, the one thing I found that's definitely worth doing. So. Thanks for watching. So here I'll show you kind of the, you know, it's nothing fancy. I put a little paper plate down, set the bowl in there. This bowl is different. Uh, you want to dry cautiously, not super fast. Um, I know from experience fur can take quite a bit and it takes quite a bit to heat it up so um, yeah but I still like to be cautious so I'll go one minute and then you just let it let it run it'll be hot when it comes out uh, to the touch potentially otherwise you can bump it up a little bit more then you set it somewhere and let it cool until it's cool to the touch and you just keep doing that off and on throughout the day um, you can weigh them and watch for them to quit losing weight uh, that means you reach you know you got it dry uh, you can use the moisture meter I just go by feel and that seems to be good enough and then I'll go out and I'll, I'll show you guys the final turn but that's all the more there is to it. You just take your time and keep doing it. <laughs>